It's Wednesday, August 10th. Coming up this weekend, August 13th and 14th, we're going to be live from Chula Vista, California for the Thorpe Cup. What is the Thorpe Cup? I'm glad you asked. It's a USA vs. Germany multi-event challenge. Where can you find it? Right there. You're watching Runner Space Live. Alright, well, last week we had our episode from the Nike Elite Camp, so if you haven't been to runnerspace.com slash tag in a while, then you don't know that I was the overall winner. That's right, and since I won, I decided I'd show a little bit of footage bask in my glory of the day of my championship run. Check it out. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I've got a run in mind that I think is going to take me about two hours. I'm going to refer to it as the Tour de Track Town. I'm going to start at famous Track Town landmark, Track Town Pizza, and I'm going to go all the way out to the end of Rexius Trail, come back by Track Town Pizza on the Prees Trail, out the finger, over to Doris Ranch, back through Prees Trail, and end by Track Town Pizza. I think it's going to take me about two hours. We'll see if I can make it. Okay, I'm hydrated, I'm all stretched out, I'm loaded with carbs. The only thing left to do is step out the door. All right, I'll see you in like an hour. Yeah. Hayward Field, I'll meet you in Hayward Field in an hour. One hour, Hayward Field. Oh. My name is Keith, some call me White Lightning, and I'm going to join Ian for the second hour. Make sure he doesn't hit the wall. Signing out. And here's Ian Turpin, about one hour in his run, passing by historic Hayward Field. All right. It's not good. Got about an hour, six minutes right now. Just finished, finished Rexius. On my way to uh, Breeze Trail and hopefully Doris Ranch. All right. The main concern right now is the sore right calf. Otherwise, I think I can do it. Let's go. All right. Runner Space Rundown. Check out this week's Runner Space Network site of the week, NikeEliteCamp.com. This is a four-day running camp where Nike invited 20 of the nation's top high school distance runners to Beaverton, Oregon at the World Nike Headquarters to learn from the best coaches and train like pros. There's lots of great content still to come on this site, including lengthy sit-down interviews with each of the 20 athletes, which we've been releasing one per day. So keep checking back. It's the High School Rundown. The eight-day event known as the AAU Junior Olympic Games wrapped up this week in New Orleans, Louisiana. One week ago in the Young Men's Division, Eric Futch of Pennsylvania threw down a 51.67 to win the 400 hurdles, taking over the top time in the U.S. this outdoor season. On Thursday, the U.S. record holder in the girls' pole vault, Morgan Lalo of Louisiana, put up an AAU Young Women's Division record 13 feet 7 inches. That's her fifth straight major championship this summer. In the intermediate girls' 100 hurdles, Kendra Williams got another win, running a 13.66. Was her fourth gold here. She also won the long jump, high jump, and heptathlon. And let's not forget about a silver in the 400 hurdle. And on Friday, not yet a high schooler, but an amazing performance in the youth girls shot put. Nia Britt of Inglewood, California smashed the age group record with her throw of 51 feet 6 and a quarter inches for the 6 pound shot. And in the young men's 400, Kavara Holmes was just 5 hundredths of a second off the US number one time. He got the win in a 46.07. And of course, with summer track well into the postseason, it's time to take a look forward to cross country. Former Harrier Magazine publisher Mark Bloom has put out his preseason and top 25 team rankings. On the girls' side, it's no surprise who tops the list, Fayetteville Manlius of New York. The five-time NXN champions who set a low-score record of 27 points last year returned their top four. And by the way, three of them were at the Nike Elite Camp. On the guys' side, it's Christian Brothers Academy of New Jersey who took fifth at NXN last year. They returned five varsity runners. Check out the full list. I'll have a link in the description. Oh, and one more thing. Sub-4 high school miler Lucas Versbikas recently won the USA Junior Triathlon title. And later that day in the team relay, he crashed on his bike and received 13 stitches on his elbow and knee. Fortunately, no broken bones. It's the College Pro Rundown. On to the 12th stop of the Diamond League, the Aviva London Grand Prix. Solid matchup in the men's 800, David Rhodesia and Abubakar Khaki. But as he's done 28 straight times before, Kenyan David Rhodesia took the win, getting its 29th straight 800 meter victory, running a meet record 142.9. In the men's 1500, Leo Manzano taught us once again that you can come back from a bad race. After a 12th place finish in Stockholm last week, he came back this week and outclassed the field. He ran a 351.24 in the mile to get the win over Bernard Lagat. In the women's 5K, American 
Lauren Fleshman had a breakthrough race. Still on the comeback trail, she ran 27 seconds faster than she did just one week ago and dominated everyone in the last 500 to get the win in a 15 flat, just two seconds off her personal best. Walter Dix won the 200 in a 20.16 into a headwind, and he followed it up by saying that Usain Bolt can definitely be beaten at Worlds. In the women's 400, Sandy Richards returned to her old self, breaking 50 for the first time this season with a big season's best, 49.66. Australian Craig Mottram had a solid performance in the men's 5K, running a 13.23 to get the win. There was a matchup in the men's 110 hurdles between Darren Robles and David Oliver, and the world record holder Darren Robles came out on top in a meet record 13.04. American Jason Richardson ran a personal best, beating out David Oliver with a 13.08. And in his last race before Worlds, Britain's Mo Farah continued his hot streak. He got his 11th straight victory, running a 740.15 to win the 3,000. And now, he's going back to the U.S. to train with Galen Rupp until the World Championships. It's a road racing rundown. Join me as we go to a sunny, warm, and humid Cape Elizabeth, Maine for the Beach to Beacon 10K. The second fastest man ever for a road 10K was here, and he got the win. Micah Kogo of Kenya with a personal best 2701 broke the tape here in a 2746. He won by nine seconds over fellow Kenyan Lucas Rodich, who set a personal best 2755. Edward Muge rounded out the top three in a 2759. The first non-Kenyan was former Arkansas runner, Australian Sean Forrest in eighth with a 2839. And the top American was Patrick Smythe in ninth with a 2928. The women's race was dominated by Ethiopian Asa Karos. She won by almost half a minute, but it was a battle for second place. Jelia Tanega and Buzanish Deva were each given the exact same time of 32.35.5, but it was Tanega who was awarded the second place finish. Sarah Slattery of Boulder, Colorado was the top American taking six with a 33.37. Next on the list, the New York Roadrunners Team Championships in Central Park, the five mile race. 10 runners are scored here on total time. The New York Athletic Club swept the team titles and the men's individual winner was Ethiopian Kumu Mergesa of the West Side Runners Club who ran a 23.41. And the top female was Caroline Lafrac of the New York Athletic Club in a 27 flat. And lastly, the Rock and Roll Providence Half Marathon. On the women's side, New Zealand's Kim Smith absolutely dominated, winning by over seven minutes in a 111.54. And Ethiopian Kuma Megaresa, just one day after winning the New York Athletic Club Team Championship race, also got the win here in a 107.32. It's time for a quick tip. If you haven't noticed already, we just launched a big update that's going to make the site much easier to navigate. It's the brand new menu bar and search, which is right there at the top of the page anywhere on Runner Space. Check it out. If you want to add any content to the site, like say upload a video, photo, or see news, just roll over the upload drop down and you can do all that right there in one click. Also, a convenient drop down for messages and notifications, all of your account settings, and the main drop down. Here's where you can access any of the major pages on Runnerspace. Roll over the stuff on the left to see some of the featured content. For example, here's some of our recently featured videos, and then if you click on it, you're on our main videos page. Now, as for the search, it's all new and works very well. Say you're looking for something from the Oregon Relays. That top result right there is the Oregon Relays website. You'll find everything you're looking for there, or you can filter your search. View all related videos, news, etc., or roll over what you're looking for on the left. Once again, this is at the top of the page everywhere on Runner Space, so navigation just got a whole lot easier. All right, folks, well, it's over and I did it. I ran uh, two hours, 10 minutes and 52 seconds. Longest run of my life by like a half an hour. Um, I decided to finish it right here at Hayward Field. You can see it's closed for resurfacing right now. Yeah, how do you feel? You know, I feel surprisingly tired. <laughs> surprisingly very tired. I My calf was wrecked about an hour in. And uh, it kind of stopped hurting after a while. But I know it's gonna hurt tomorrow. I was fortunate enough to have uh, the, the cameraman here, Keith Laverty, come meet me about an hour into the run, provide me with some Gatorade and power bar, and then run the last hour with me. And uh, it really helped me get through it. Any words for uh, Scenic? Uh, yeah, Scenic, I can't imagine you ran further than I did, but uh, if you did, this is nothing to hang my head about. And uh, I think those shoes are mine. You're it.